Alright folks, I'm going to start off with kind of a no-brainer statement here. This, right here, is obviously not an ultralight 5-piece or 10-piece kit. Um, but what I'm going to focus on isn't necessarily the, the kit and what's in it so much as the packs. There's multiple packs here, um, how they go together, um, how I put them together, why I like them. Kind of a pack review, um, and then I'll, I'll show some of the things in the kit, but really they're not the, the meat and potatoes. The bag itself is. Um, right now what I'm wearing is a Kifaru ZXR in OD green, and then I have piggybacked um, on the far back. It's, it's an SDS brand Engage pack. Um, I wasn't familiar with it, so I'm sure many of you aren't familiar with it, so I really want to show that off. There's a lot of information about the Kifaru pack, so I'll show it a little bit, um, but I'm really going to talk probably more about that SDS pack than the Kifaru. Um, I got into Kifaru packs, just a little background, when I was in Afghanistan, started looking for a good bag um, that would hold a lot of gear, do a lot of things, be really, really versatile, and um, at the time I bought a Kifaru Zulu, a straight Zulu and Coyote Tan. Great bag, loved it, got home, didn't find myself using it much. Downsized to a Kifaru X-Ray, another great bag, it was used as a daily, everyday carry bag, back and forth to work, throw us a change of clothes, just some randomness in the pack and take off. It was a great bag, comfortable to wear. Then I got to doing some more outdoor stuff again and it just wasn't big enough. Um, through some other deals, trades, barters and things, I ended up at an opportunity to, to trade two Kifaru X-Rays that I ended up with for this ZXR. Um, this is a Gen 1 ZXR in like new condition, OD green with a standard top lid. <clears throat> um, if you go out to kifaru.net you can see those the options you can get with their bags. Um, I would love to actually trade this or sell this off to get a, a new Kifaru um, Timberline, um, either T2 or T3, but they're, they're up there in price. These are too, but those are even more up there. So, um, basic pack, padded Molly's, Molly belt with pals, um, and I'll show you what I've got going on here in the back. So, I'm going to get this thing dumped here. I've got to say that even with the weight that I've got in here, which is probably... Um, right now, probably up where somewhere around 50 pounds or so ish, this thing is comfortable to have on your back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera down just a little bit here so we can get that whole pack set up in the frame. Um, what you can see over here is, is the, the SDS Engage pack. Um, it's a day pack, assault pack style bag, and the way that it's rigged on here is very similar to Kifaru's tried and true piggyback system. There is a, a ladder lock down here, a three bar, fish through a D-ring to a two, a two inch um, ITW Nexus clip, which is one of the modifications I made to this SDS Engage pack when I got it. Um, and then there's another set of side release buckles, ITW Nexus side release buckles here. Um, get this thing all disconnected and toss the, the Kifru out of the way for just a minute and we'll talk about the Engage first because it's the, the one I really want to focus on. Um, Kifaru sells that piggyback system on their webpage. Um, I've got a sewing machine and I, and I understand the system and how it works, so I just went ahead and, and made it myself. There's no sense in me spending the money to buy it if I can make it, right? So like I said, uh, this pack came. It's listed as OD green. It is a dark green. It is a, it's not a straight Cordura nylon, so there's a texture. I don't know if you can see it to the nylon here. Um, so it's got a little bit of a pattern, which is actually great to me. It makes it look a little less military, um, a lot more like a civilian bag. Um, all black hardware on it. Um, good sternum strap. Great, really, really nice shoulder straps. Um, I don't know if you can tell here, but you can actually see through those. Through those, they're a mesh material that has kind of a waffle pattern on the back. So it's really, really good for ventilation. The top of it is completely adjustable, so you can adjust the torso length. And then for those who might be inclined, not this guy, um, it is a jumpable military assault pack. It has a extra set. Get them out of here. You're looking at my head and wondering what the heck I'm doing. Um, in the back panel, oh lord, is another set. You can see a different color down in there. Of webbing, um, and that show is the two-inch webbing for the the actual rigging for a jumpable pack. Um, it does have a hydration bladder bladder pocket that is accessible back here. Um, it has 
kind of a different hip belt setup. It's got a padded hip belt here, and then an external hip belt outside of the padding that is adjustable independently from that padding that has the molly loops on it. On this side I've got a flitter patch attached to the molly um, to throw a radio or cell phone or something like that in. Um, so right out of the box I replaced the uh, original hip belt buckle with a two inch ITW Nexus so it married up with the buckles I was using on the Kifaru um, and then I added some split repair buckles um, one inch ITW Nexus slider release theirs. So to give you an idea on the size here, um, it is not crammed completely full, but it's close. Um, I'll show you what I threw in it for a night. So I've got a couple pieces of nylon rope. Um, they're probably about 20 foot hanks that I rolled up, and I've got some eights on bites on the ends for girth hitches and things. Piece of paracord. Um, it's my sharpening kit, and a uh, been trying to practice flint and steel, so there's a flint and steel kit there too. Um, this is nothing more than a triangular file and a honing stone. Um, future review to come, cold steel Canadian belt knife. Um, new little piece of kit I picked up. I actually really, really like it. Um, I'm just waiting to get it out and use it some more and do some review on it. Um, down here is a uh, Pelican 1030 micro case. It's got a fire kit in it, a couple lighters, a bunch of tinder. Um, just a, a good all-around kit that makes sure I get there every time with a fire. My uh, titanium or aluminum Sea Summit um, spork. Space blanket. Um, this pocket inside here, it's a clear film pocket that Velcro shut. Um, I, could, I would like to have some more organization options in there, but that's all it's got is that one pocket. Um, got a magnesium bar and striker. And then this is a, a, a small tin I got at Christmas time last year that I filled with tallow um, that I use. I mostly use it on my axe blade and my boots. And then a small signal mirror. Um, so that's, I just crammed in the outside there, made space for it, and that's what fit. Um, I kind of set this up so that when you detach it from that bag, you've got a day pack you can just walk away from that pack with and be fairly comfortable for an overnight or two if need be. So then in the main compartment here, um, this bag pouch is a Kifaru Paratarp and Paraponcho um, along with uh, about a dozen tent stakes um, to set up a shelter with. Um, I've got a Snow Peak 600 cup with a tapered Guy Out Designs bottle with a, um, I just used some, just some uh, wire rope to make a bale and a small S-clip. Um, this has also got a, uh, a silicone bracelet from the Pathfinder Gathering around the top to hold on this, uh, this little sit piece. This is actually one of the great things about this cup. It's got this silicone little sippy piece so you don't burn your mouth when the cup's hot. Um, those nest together even though this will not nest with any other Nalgene cup bottle, but because this bottle's tapered, they nest really well together. Um, small fishing kit, just got some bank line a couple of bobbers, some sinkers, some hooks, and uh, I threw some uh, ranger bands in there just to have them. A um, pair of neoprene gloves when I was packing everything initially in this kit. Um, it's really cold outside. For some reason, March in Illinois has decided to be summer, and I'm probably not going to need those much longer. Um, and then some cliff bars, some granola, and some uh, some drink mix, some chai latte drink mix. Just some nice things to have. Um, a handful of Grimlocks come in handy. And then the last thing, if you're not familiar with it, go read up about it. My Kifaru Wobby, one of the best Wobbies on the market. So that's the loadout in this bag um, that I just had in it. I've, I've crammed more. It's got one other pocket that I didn't show on the side here. It's more like a document pocket. It's a real thin side zip pouch right in here. Um, I've got a tablet that fits very well in there. I've got a small netbook that fits real well in there. Um, and then Inside there's one compression strap, and it actually has the uh, the zipper buckle or the whistle buckle on it. So I've always got a whistle with me as long as I've got this pack. Um, I would prefer to see that whistle buckle on a sternum strap, so it's right there in front of you. But at least it's got it. So that gives you an idea how much this bag holds and, and the design of this pack. Um, again, that's the SDS Engage 
is the model. Um, I, I actually picked it out. Guy was wearing it in the airport, and I could not identify the pack. And I'm kind of a pack nut, so uh, for me to not be able to identify a pack was pretty, pretty rare. Um, so I, I spent actually about three months really digging around the internet trying to ID this pack, and finally about a month ago I did. Got it ordered, found it on eBay, brand new with tags. It was like sixty bucks. Now, that's cheap when you get into something like this. The ZXR here I've got I've got laid out for a big loadout. Um, on the sides, I've gone ahead and thrown some extra pouches over here. I've got a Kifaru compass or GPS pouch, it's got a compass in it, um, and then a Gray Man knife. For if you're not familiar with Gray Man, um, these things are tough as nails. Uh, you can't. I mean, you can, but good luck breaking it. And when you do, you call Mike at Gray Man, and he fixes it. That's all there is to it. Um, this one was a gift before my deployment, um, across the spine. It's got an ode to my daughter. It says Addie's Daddy on it. Um, and then down here under the grip, um, DTAQ, Death to Al-Qaeda. Um, went through my whole mob to Afghanistan, and about the most action it saw was cutting big, huge, giant pallet boxes in the post office. Um, but that knife lives right here on the side. Compass lives right next to it. This is an empty Camelback bottle pouch. Um, I've got it on here because part of my winter loadout includes a stove, um, and I have not broken down and bought an expensive stovepipe set. So I, I use um, two sections of 24-inch, 3-inch household um, ducting as a stovepipe for my stove. It'll slip down inside this, hangs out the top about as high as my, my hiking steps or hiking poles do. It's not a big deal to have it hanging there. Cinches down tight, it's out of the way and that just holds it on the bottom keep it from sliding out. On the other side of the pack, on the belt here, I've got another Camelback bottle pouch that actually has, of all things, a Camelback bottle in it. Because I have the other pack with me with the stainless steel bottle the, and the, the cup to cook in, um, I just keep a regular Camelback bottle for quick drinking on the side. Um, and here is just a, a set of Bushnell binoculars, nothing special. Um, here's part of the rigging for that piggyback setup. It comes right off so it's not always on there. Um, Kifaru uses a system on their belts called power poles, um, which is a D-ring here that the waist belt goes through and when you pull you use the leverage against your body to snug that up. Um, they have complete instructions on adjusting your, your hip belt correctly to take the weight off your shoulders and when you do it and follow those directions a 60 pound pack still weighs 60 pounds but man, your back does not hate you like it does with an old green tick or a molly ruck or something like that. On the side here, I have a Kifaru Skinny Mini Long Pocket. Lays pretty flat. Um, zips up the sides. I've got some bank line, some paracord, um, just some kind of one-off need stuff. Normally get to in a hurry. Um, that This is set up to rig a quick, um, a quick clothesline of sorts. I've got cord in here to tie some um, some pressing knots against other cordage and some D-rings to run a tight um, either A-frame line of some line, a taut line of some kind, um, a real thin kind of spandex beanie, and just some wet wipes. Fits real well in that side pocket, right where I can get to it if I need it. And then we get into the main portion of the pack here. Um, one of the big issues pointed out by many about the Zulu and the ZXR is the pack is strappy. It has a lot of extra webbing on it. Um, you've got tie-out points here on the bottom that have quick releases, a um, good spot to put you know, a sleeping backpack or an extra blanket or an extra poncho or your, your uh, sleeping pad or anything like that. Anything that's going to take up a lot of space that doesn't need to be protected by the bag, you've got room to strap it here on the bottom. Um, those straps are not removable or sewn on. They do have quick releases here though, so you can get into one of the great features, which is a bottom access zipper. So I'll show you, boom, I'm in, I can get to the whole contents of the bottom of my pack right here. So to give you some idea of the contents of this pack from the bottom, um, if I needed to get in set up shelter for the night, I've got a, a Gore-Tex bivy bag, I've got my Thermarest Z-Lite, I've got one patrol weight military sleeping bag, I haven't broken down, I bought a much more expensive sleeping bag yet, um, a silk sleeping bag liner, um, a solo tent. Generally a three season, but you know I've slept in worse in, in cold weather. Um, and as I reach farther up the bag and start pulling more stuff down, um, I've actually got my hammock in there. I've 
got um, another patrol weight bag so I can snap the two together inside the Gore-Tex bivy bag and end up with approximately a 30 or better degree sleeping bag. Um, and then as I get all the way up to the top, I'll just go to the top and open it up. That whole tent fits in there. I mean, you're looking at 24 inches worth of stuff at least. Uh, filling up that pack. It's a top loader traditionally without that bottom open. A couple quick release buckles here. Cord lock. One more quick release buckle in the back on this top compression strap. And you've got this huge snow hood that was completely compressed. That gives you about another six to eight inches of packing space. Um, and I've just got my food bag up there with a couple nights worth of food. Now, laid flat across the back, inside here there's a bladder pouch. Um, probably not going to be able to see it real well. They all come with a small, they call it a chamber pocket. Let's get down in here. Here, this small chamber pocket, and then across the back is a bladder pouch down here. In that bladder pouch, I've actually got some goodies I'll show you too. While I'm right here, there's a zipper across the back here, so if you need to access anything right on top, from outside the pack, you can get there. Plus, with this big snow hood, like I showed, about eight inches of extra space there, you can raise this thing way up, and the top lid is completely adjustable and floating. It's on ladder locks on the back and quick release buckles on the front. Um, before I dig into those last few things on the inside, there are three full length sleeve pockets. See, I've got my sticks in there on one, and uh, my Wetterlings Hunter's Axe on the other. Um, you can slide the buttstock of a rifle down in there and cinch it down in tight. The third one here, they've all got a tie out at the top. Great use for these would be 100 ounce camel black back type bladders. If you had a long way to go with no water and you had to hump it, you could carry 300, 400 ounces of water in there in bladders. Um, stuck down in here in this flat piece, I've got small cookie sheet, so when I do take my stove out, I've got something solid to put it on. Extremely lightweight, that thing weighs ounces, um, costs like two bucks. I mean, and there's there's a lot more uses than just setting your stove on. I mean, you can dig with that thing, you can do a lot of stuff with that little piece of metal. And then, another great Kifaru item is the cargo chair. Um, I've got the straps tucked in here, but the long and short of this chair, or this piece, is these little three bars hook on the bottom, down like that, and then the straps come up and hook on the sides, and I have a cargo shelf um, that's strong enough to put me on if there's somebody enough strong enough to carry me. Um, it's got a shock cord um, strap there, and just a fleece cover. Um, the fleece cover is reversible to blaze orange if you're hunting somewhere where you need the bright color. Um, but I keep it inside because I don't use it generally unless I'm getting somewhere and i got something to haul back out. Um, the suspension system is amazing. There's no complaints to be had anywhere here. It's very comfortable, well padded on the back, um, well padded lumbar support, and, and great hit belt. So uh, It's a big pack, so I probably took longer to talk about it than I wanted to, but I had to because it's so big. Um, if you're not familiar with Kif Kifaru gear, go get a look at it. There are packs out there sized um, for about every style of, of hiking, backpacking, hunting, uh, military, whatever you want. Kifaru's got something out there and their customer service is amazing. If you want to order something special, um, I've got a purple Kifaru e e that was custom made for my daughter. I've got the material upstairs to send off to them to have a blue one made for my son and an organizer patch, pouch in the purple for my daughter. Um, I've got a one of their Whoobies custom order for my kids. It's half size um, with a bunch of extra tie outs on it so I can cinch it down and make it like a little pocket for their feet. Kifaru is amazing to work with. They'll do about anything you ask them to. Um, I haven't even gotten into their shelters. I've got that, that pair of tarp and pair of poncho. That is a, a solo shelter at best. Um, it's got room when you're in it by yourself for all your kit, and it's got a stove jack so you can put a stove in it and heat that place up. I use it outside, 18 degrees outside, small stove that I made at home. I had that thing cranked up to about 60. Um, so their, their kit is great kit. You do pay for it, though. Like I said in the beginning, not a poor man's kit and not a small kit, not a light kit. Um, but if you're going anywhere for a long time and you got to carry all the goodies to make yourself comfortable, it's the way to go, and it fits and it works well. 
Um, that SDS pack, uh, you may be familiar with the name SDS. Um, SDS is the, uh, the current maker of the Molly Ruck and the fighting load carrier and the current assault pack that's all military that's all current issue military gear so you can get into this SDS engage pack for not a lot of money and get a lot of amazing features in an assault pack or a day pack style bag um, real inexpensively haven't put it through a bunch of paces but I see absolutely no way that this thing is going to fail on the field on me it is it is rock solid and uh, and pretty good to go so I um, just wanted to share those quick couple things with you, especially about the packs, not so much about the kit. Um, look forward to your comments. Um, hope to get the review on that Canadian belt knife. I've got a Rex knife upstairs to do a review on. Um, and I may beat up that Gray Man some in, some, in a video too. So um, look forward to your comments, your emails, all things you got to say. Thanks for taking a look at it.